welcome to Movie Talk, our weekly show about movies, the people who star in them, and the people who create them. With us today is Jonah Hill, who first became famous for his naughty films like Superbad and Knocked Up. It's awesome! But now has emerged as a star in 21 Jump Street, and of course earned an Oscar nomination for Moneyball, where he played opposite Brad Pitt. So I'm with Jonah Hill, who is in many ways the busiest guy in Hollywood. You have made, in a relatively short period of time, you've made so many films, mm -hmm. and you look like you're having a great time. I am, I mean, there are times where I'm exhausted because of the amount of work I take on, but I'm never unhappy that I make movies. You know, I think making movies is a gift, and all of this is a way to keep the ball rolling in, in enabling to me to just make more films, because that is the gift that I'm, you know, receiving, is getting to make the movies that I find interesting. Making interesting movies are also not getting typecast. I mm. mean, like Moneyball was so different from your persona in right. some of your other pictures. I wanted you to see these player evaluations that you asked me to do. I asked you to do three. Yeah. To evaluate three players. Yeah. How many did you do? 47. Okay. Actually, 51. I don't know why I lied just then. I think when you come out as something, when you come out of the gate, whatever you come out of the gate as and you're first imprinted in people's minds as, yeah. it's really hard for people to see you as anything other than that forever. Mm -hmm. And I understand that because I'm guilty of that as well. It's easy. People don't have a lot of time to spend thinking about me. Mm -hmm. So they saw me do that one thing, I'm that, next thing. What, what's that next thing? How do I categorize that next thing? Yeah. And it's my job and my passion to not just be one thing. I would be miserable, you know? I had a lot of, a lot of success early on in my career with a lot of these like, you know, uh, comedies that I'm really, really proud of. I think they're really amazing movies. I mean, Knocked Up was probably uh, one super of bad. Yeah, super, super Bad big. was like for me the one that right. sort of put me on the map, I would say. I learned so much from those movies and have a real adoration and respect and love them. And I'm lucky to be in movies that people still care about years after they were made. But that's not all I'm trying to do. And so, you know, when you grow up and you mature, you want to try all sorts of different things as an actor. You don't want to be the guy sitting there watching BBC and saying, oh, I saw that guy. He was my waiter and I totally dismissed him like everyone else does in his life. And I totally, she was wrong because he's a major, major, major influence on me now and I feel terrible. Now, were you upset in forgetting Sarah Marshall that you weren't asked to, to do Full Frontal? And forgetting Sarah Marshall? Yeah. No, I had the best time on that movie because I think I worked maybe one or two days right. and got to, and stayed in Hawaii for about a month. That's kind of a good deal. I had them spread it out over maybe the two or three days over the course of a month. Right. And uh, read on a hammock and surfed and hung out. <laughs> You looked like you were having the most fun, just mm -hmm. uh, and get me to the Greek. You looked like the way you were enjoying that. Well, it's funny, yeah. that was probably not, that was probably the least amount of fun I ever See? had. See, it's like <laughs> perceptions are... I, like, like the director, Nick Stoller, and Rodney Rothman, the producer, and Russell, and, and Diddy, all those people, I had so much fun with them, the whole cast and crew, but the hours and the travel itself was actually, like, it was fun, it was, I, I said the wrong word, it's super fun, but the hardest shoot I've ever done as far as like hours a day and traveling and it was like not an easy shoot. But I did have fun with the people because I loved, like I love Nick the director. I don't know if you ever met Nick Storer. Yeah, he's great, great He's guy. one of the nicest guys in the world and so talented and uh, uh, I had fun but it was just the least easy I would say yeah. of any shoot I've ever done. <laughs> Excuse me. I played the straight man in that movie which to me is not, it was a good lesson in like, I love the film itself, and I love Nick, but I didn't get to, to have the fun part. Yeah. I was just like, the guy was acting crazy, and I had to just be like, don't do that. Yeah. 
you know, which is like the straight man, which gave me respect for the great straight men, you know, like Steve Martin in, in planes, trains, and automobiles and stuff where, where you see the, it was such a good exercise in learning how to just be the person who's put upon, I guess, or, you know, not the person who's getting to do the wild and crazy stuff. That's right. But it's more fun to do the wild and crazy stuff. That's what I was saying. I just kept sitting there going, man, Russell's getting to be like the crazy person. Yeah. And I'm just going to sit here and be like, don't do that. Yeah. Next you movie, know? I'm crazy. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> next, Nick, next time you write a movie, let me be the crazy guy. I thought it was really great what you did at dinner, opening up to me like that. And I know it's weird, but I thought it was great. Thanks. And it's great to finally have a new dad. You gotta get used to my weird sense of humor, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I really thought that was that was a great thing that you did. Now with Cyrus, mm -hmm. you're sure as hell not a mommy's boy. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's a strange character to connect with, no? Yes, yes. Cyrus is a, you know one of my favorite movies I've ever done. These guys, Mark and Jay Duplass, wrote and directed it, and I, I love them very much. And uh, you know that character was really fascinating to me because when I was reading the script, I didn't know if the ending of that movie was gonna be him killing John C. Riley, Come here. Come here. I really didn't know what was, it turns I out was to be hoping a really sweet that. movie. Well, it turns out to be this really sweet movie, but you really don't know what it's like, and that's like every actor's dream to play a character where you really don't know what's next for them. They're so, you know, psychologically unreadable that you, you know, it's a really, it was a really exciting character to play. That was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. Let's practice. No. Yeah, I'm a player, and you gotta cut me from the roster. No. Go. What do you mean, no? No. Part of the job, man. Well, I shouldn't have, I'm not gonna do this. I don't think, I think this is stupid. I'm not gonna fire anybody, and this is dumb. They're professional ball players. Just be straight with them. No fluff, just facts. Pete, I gotta let you go. Jack's office will handle the details. That's it? Really? Would you rather get a bullet to the head or five to the chest and bleed to death? Are those my only two options? Now, when Moneyball was first proposed to you, mm -hmm. do you find, is, when, you, when you see a role, do you instinctively, your, your reactions instinctively cool ones? I just choose roles that I feel like I have some sort of connection to. Yeah. If I understand that I should, I know how to play that person or I feel some sort of connection to that person, uh, whether I'm like them or not like them, whether I've met someone like them and I understand how to play them, then that's what I gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. So let's take some specific pictures in because you're seeing, right. like with Moneyball, right. that's not you, that person. No, I would say right. that's as much as the opposite of me. Is. Yeah, you're not a computer geek. No, I barely know how to use a computer. And, <laughs> yeah. But I also, uh, you know, I really wanted, there's certain members of society I see that like blend into a wall or have a really difficult time expressing their feelings. Mm -hmm. And I'm the opposite. I mm -hmm. stand, I tend to like attention and, right. and am very, have a very easy time expressing myself and communicating what, I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it was fascinating to me that I've just met people like Peter Brand and uh, was curious about how to tell that story, how to mm -hmm. play that character. Pena is an all-star, okay? And if you dump him and this Hatterberg thing doesn't work out the way that we want it to, you know this is, this is the kind of decision that gets you fired. It is. Yes, you're right. I may lose my job. In which case, I'm a 44-year-old guy with a high school diploma and a daughter I'd like to be able to send to college. I just think Brad is like a remarkable person. He's a great actor, great filmmaker, great producer, uh, but he really cares a lot about people. He knows kind of he's been gifted with talent and success and gives it back. Mm -hmm. And that is like the best lesson you could learn as a young person coming up in the business is give it back. He seemed, you know, you look at the film, and he seemed like a cool guy. He doesn't steal scenes from you. Mm -hmm. He seems... He tried. He's tried, <laughs> right. But you showed him. I just choked him out every time, every <laughs> chance I had. Yeah. But he seems like a very supportive actor. Is that true? Yeah, he's an incredibly generous 
uh, you know, actor to work with. He's an amazing actor. He's a guy who has been so supportive of me, so uh, I would say even pushes me up every chance he gets publicly yeah. or and privately just to be like, you're doing great and, and you know, help me get recognized in this way. And uh, also he was a producer of the film. So I think when you produce a film, you understand that the success of the, and even when you, if you're a smart star of a film, you understand that the film being great is better than just a personal yeah. score in every scene or whatever. Like you, you really just want the film to be amazing. That's right. And he put his butt on line for this film. I mean, mm -hmm. he worked hard to support it and do publicity and do right. appearances. You guys did a lot of things together. You yeah. have a good running show. We do. We have a, like an old school vaudeville act yeah. now at this point, with all the with all the Q and A's and and uh, we call the guilds. Interviews. We should explain that you do it for the the the, the various guilds and the yeah, like the Screen Actors Critics Guild and and, and the Academy members. And you you show the film often in different circles, and you you speak after the film and answer questions and uh, you know it just so happens that we get along really well so that makes it a lot easier and you know. Now how does it work? Do you, do you sit down in, in early on and simply mm -hmm. say to each other look we're gonna be doing this endlessly we're gonna bore each other to death who's gonna do what? No because you don't know when you when you start making a movie you don't know that you're gonna be considered for awards and in, in that cir circuit so uh, there was no discussion and we just kinda of fell into our roles, you know, him, the iconic movie star, and me, the, the other person there. <laughs> How old are you? 22. You certainly are. That'll be $80. Oh, okay. Sha, thank you kindly. Will that do? Certainly will. Thank you, Seth. Hey, thank you. What's the ideal life for for an actor like you you want to direct right mm -hmm. and you would like you're writing would you like to move from being an actor in this show to to being the producer director of this one no i think it changes as you mature and you go through different time periods i think it's funny if you'd asked me a year ago what my interests were they weren't necessarily the same as they are right now and i think it's like anything in life you have to just listen to where you're at at that moment and right now Nothing excites me more than doing more dramatic film work as an actor. Right. To do dramatic work and not go back to just comedy. No, I think doing great work is my intention. It's not like I'm saying I don't want to do comedy. I, mean, I have two comedy films coming out this year mm -hmm. that I think are hilarious and great. Yeah. Um, 21 Jump Street and Neighborhood Watch. And they're both movies I'm super proud of. Right. But I feel like I've made in the past, whatever, 10 years it is, have made a lot of comedic films. I don't feel like I'm necessarily running any new territory for me as an actor. Like I'm really like exercising muscles I've been exercising now for a long time. And for me, it's important, especially with Cyrus and Moneyball being the only two dramatic films I've done, that I'm so proud of them to keep going in that direction and just explore what else is out there for me as an actor, mm -hmm. but never leave anything behind. I mean, that's absurd. I would never be like, I'm not doing comedy anymore. Or, right. You know, I hate that attitude yeah. that comedy is not as difficult or whatever, as exciting as drama. It's just, I feel like I've done a lot of that mm -hmm. and I haven't, I've only made two dramas. So I'm curious to do more of the thing I've done less of. So are you writing yourselves roles that are very different from your previous roles? Well, I mean, luckily with, Moneyball and Cyrus, the two dramas I've done, and having Moneyball be the second one, and to get you know these nominations and things like that, I guess it's just more of a stamp of approval, like you can do this other kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been really gratifying to just be an actor, you know, to really focus now on being a dramatic actor and trying to find those things that I'm passionate about. But then there's a film like 21 Jump Street, mm -hmm. which I incepted from the original TV show. It's been five years to the day when it comes out, March 16th that I started working on it. I thought it. this job would have more car chases than explosions. Bro. You're dead. Yours isn't loaded, right? No, nah, that's no fun. Got our first bus. I got him! Yes! yes! You forgot to read him his Miranda rights. Do you even know the Miranda rights? <laughs> Look, it obviously starts with, do you have the right to remain an attorney? Did you say you have the right to be an attorney? You do have the right to be an attorney if you want to. You go through a process like that where it's five years where you write it, produce it, star in it, and then you're like, 
I just want to act. Mm -hmm. I don't want the burden of dealing with the studio and being the producer and and the you know the studio who were great by the way. Everyone was great, but you know there's a lot of pressure when you're when you're spinning a lot of different plates. And now I really am excited to just focus on you know stretching myself as a dramatic actor. So now as a young guy in films, mm -hmm. in a lot of films. At what point do you get an instinct that things are going really right, things are not going as right as you'd <laughs> like them to go? I mean, like the sitter, I got some right. good laughs out of the sitter. It didn't quite cook for you, or did it, as an actor? I, th I, I love, David Gordon Green is one of my favorite human He's beings on, on the planet. I love him. Um, I think the movie, you know, is super fun. This is Slater, Blythe, and Rodrigo. <laughs> My real babysitter, Nancy, she does what I want her to do. I'm not a real babysitter. <gasps> Shocking. I'm more of a sit on the couch, do whatever I say or I'll kill you type of babysitter. Ah! <laughs> and you sprayed perfume in my mouth. I hate you. I'll destroy you. Ah! Super funny, mm -hmm. fun movie. Is it the same impact? Does it have the same impact as like Superbad or Moneyball will have? I don't, I don't know. I'm not the person to judge that kind of thing. I just go out and try and do the best work I can in every situation. Cats, can you dig it? Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of cats, then me doing stuff, then back to the cats doing stuff. You've gotten 700,000 hits in four days from this? Yep. If you put cute kitten in the title of your YouTube video, you're gonna get a million hits. Mm -hmm. And then I link that to my website and you can see my stand-up on my website, it's genius. You are an LA kid. You went to Crossroads, a very good private school where yeah. everybody in your class, I'm sure, wanted to be a star. Crossroads is a really b bizarre, great place. I really loved it, but uh, one thing about it is you grow up in the entertainment industry. People's parents are right. studio heads and actors and musicians or whatever. So to me, it didn't seem like being an act, that was not my ambition, and it was a lot of other people's ambition, but I think a lot of people get into it for the wrong, for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And for me, I just was a cinephile, I love movies. And, and your I, dad wasn't a total show business person, was I he? mean, he's an accountant yeah. for musicians and stuff like that, but uh, I, mean, I would not call him a show business guy. <laughs> if you've ever met him, he's like yeah. the loveliest guy in the world, yeah. but he's not, uh, slick show business guy. He's a family man, you know. But did you feel growing up with kids, so many of whom were from show business, that mm -hmm. to a degree it impaired their personality development? I think it gave a lot of them a pressure to, if they weren't successful in show business, it felt like they were sort of failing in a way. Yeah. And to me, I had no pressure for my family to be in show business at all. It was not encouraged even. It was just whatever you want to do, just work really hard at it. I don't care what you do, right. as long as you're a good guy and you work really hard. Everybody your age in this town dreams of, boy, wouldn't it be nice to be Jonah, to be in the middle of the action, to have all these roles. And What is the good news and what's the bad news about being exactly who you are? I just feel lucky. I mean, I don't think, first of all, anyone probably says I want to be Jonah, <laughs> but I, I, mind. I think being making movies is something that I feel really lucky I get to do, and that to me is the ultimate goal. I never wanted to be famous or, you know, I never thought about Oscars and things like that, but it's all super exciting, but all it does is allow for me to keep making movies and different kinds of movies. But and how about the pressure? There's a lot of pressure on you. I mean, some of your new pictures, you have to carry the picture. Mm -hmm. You are the above the line guy. It isn't quite as much fun, I would think, as just being part of the action. You can't think of it like that. You'll drive yourself crazy. Yeah. You just gotta do what you would do if you were the 20th lead. Yeah. If you're the <laughs> right. number one on the call sheet or number 80, you need to play the same game. You need to, you know, play the character as you would play it without thinking about that, because you're also just drive yourself nuts. Yeah. Think, yeah. But again, with someone, to get back to Brad Pitt, mm -hmm. I mean, he, there's such a pressure on him as a person, because he can't go anywhere without being the center. Right. I mean, he goes into a room, and the chemistry of that room changes. Mm -hmm. Now, he go, learned that from me. That, yeah, that's right. But that's a bit of a, that's pressure. Um, of course, I mean, but I think Brad's in a rarefied zone. I think people like Brad and 
George Clooney, and and I think there's very rare, uh, a rarefied grouping of people, and those two are probably at the mountaintop of that, where they're really, uh, they're amazing actors, they've contributed so much to film, but they really are ambassadors for what we do. It's almost like being the president or something. They're really just the, the they're really in a lot of ways the face of our industry, yeah. and so. You know, I really respect Brad and George and people like that that carry that on their shoulders, with it, whether they want to or not. Lastly, who have you learned to admire the most of the filmmakers you've worked with? I'd say, you know, Judd Apatow and Bennett Miller, mm -hmm. Greg Matola, Nick Stoller, and Mark and Jay Duplass are probably David Gordon Green. I mean, I've been really lucky. I've worked with a lot of filmmakers I really respect, I'm sure I'm leaving some out that, you know, David O. Russell was the first director I worked with. Yeah. Some directors command the kind of presence where they are like, I know what I'm doing, I don't need your input, and there's a real safety in that when you know they do know what they're doing. Yeah. But then the danger is when they have that kind of attitude and they, you, they may not know what they're doing. And they don't even have a shot list. They, yeah. <laughs> That's I, Someone said to me, yeah. someone said to me, an actor said to me once that had a, maybe a reputation of being difficult. Uh, or something said, the only time I've ever been difficult is when I showed up more prepared than the director was. Yeah. And that, whether it's true or not, made a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't consider myself a difficult person, but I'm someone who challenges, to, will always challenge to make the movie better. I think the movie, you have one shot, you, once you lose that set, you're gone, whatever it is. I believe in whatever it takes to get the best day of work every day. Great pleasure to talk to you yeah, as yeah. always. You're great, I Peter. I wish you well. Thank Win you. Win a lot of stuff, man. Much respect. Have fun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>